Now, while we achieved a pretty good path planning globally, we still have to admit that locally the generated path is not drivable by a normal car. So, for example, for this situation, we may get a path like this, which could be driven by a robot, for example, our two track robot which we used in the slam lecture, which would first drive straight, then move one track forward, the other backwards, so make it turn in place and then drive straight, 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 again make a turn in place and then arrive at the goal. However, a normal car has the constraint that it can only go straight or it can go along a circle, where the radius of the circle is determined by the steering wheel. So what we want now is, we want to adapt our search for a possible path such that the trajectory which we generate can be driven by a standard car which obeys those constraints. So we will assume that our car can go either straight or make a turn to the right or to the left where those turns are made of circular segments. So this model is more realistic than what we had earlier but you won't find it on real roads because if you build a real road like that consisting of a straight line segment then a circular segment and then again a straight line segment this would mean that a car coming from here with a certain speed, the steering wheel in this position, would have to turn its steering wheel at infinite speed at this point to make this right turn and then turn it back at infinite speed at this point, which is unrealistic. So that if you build streets that way, you will have a lot of accidents right here and probably also here. However, this kind of navigation would be possible at slow speeds, for example, on a parking lot where the cars drive slowly, then stand still, turn their wheels and then go straight into the parking lot. Imagine our car is here and looking along the x-axis. So now we do have x, y and heading angle which together form the pose of our car. Now assume this is the start point and we want to end up here with that orientation. And all the way from here to there should be made up of either straight line or circular segments. So in this case the solution is easy. We would take straight line segments until we arrive here in our goal state. Now if our goal state is actually this, then we would probably start the same, but the last segment would be replaced by a curved segment. And so we see starting from here, if we make the simplifying assumption that we always will go for a unit length, we will go straight, make a right turn or left turn, and for further simplification, we only allow three curvatures, namely a curvature of zero, a positive curvature and a negative curvature, both of which are constant, then we end up in the following situation. In the first step, we can go straight, left or right. Starting from this position, we can go straight again or left or right, but also starting from these positions, we can go straight, left or right. And so as you see, just as earlier, the set of solutions spans a tree, but now this is in the kinematic state space of the car instead of being in a raster, as was the case in our previous implementations. And so our plan is as follows. Starting from our start pose, we will try to reach our goal pose by exploring this tree. So to simplify matters, our standard length will be 5 units and the allowed curvatures will be plus 1 tenth, 0 or minus 1 tenth. And so we will start by expanding the start node and then we will similarly, as in our A star implementation, compute the cost from the distance from the start plus the remaining direct line distance and we will do so for the other nodes as well. Now the driven distance in all those three cases is 5 and so this node will be the closest to our goal and we will expand this node next. And it is our hope that we will finally end up with a trajectory, say, like that, which is able to combine straight line and circular segments. And again, what we explore here is the state space in terms of the controls that the car can change, in this case, the steering angle. Whereas earlier, we have explored the space of possible positions in the plane without worrying about 
if it is possible for a real vehicle to set its controls in a way that it can actually follow this path. Now there's a small adjustment we have to make with regard to our previous implementations, namely in the goal state, since we allow only discrete lengths and only discrete curvatures. In general, we will be unable to hit a goal state exactly. And so instead of testing if we reached the goal state exactly as we did earlier, we now have to test if our current state is within a certain tolerance in position and heading angle from our goal state. And if so, we will accept it. So this is not very unrealistic, because usually after having planned that path, we might still be able to fine tune this trajectory and so to use in detail a slightly different curvature to optimize the path and end up in the correct position with the correct orientation. So now let me show you the implementation of this, which you'll find in PBO2A. So the code looks pretty much like our previous A star code with some modifications. There's the usual stuff in the beginning. And then we have here an extra class, which does the following. Given a start pose, a curvature and a length, it computes the end pose. So if you give it this start pose, a length and a curvature, it will compute this end pose, where this is the length and the radius is 1 divided by the curvature. So this method end pose is called all the time when we try to generate the three variants starting from an existing pose. And this second method down here is actually only for the visualization. What it does is given again start pose, curvature and length and in addition a delta length it will generate for the exact same situation as above a set of intermediate points at a spacing of delta length. And this is used in the graphical user interface to draw the final trajectory. So now let's go down to the main implementation. First, as previously, we define our movements. Those movements now are not in terms of X and Y, but they are in terms of car controls. So they consist each of the curvature and the distance to drive. And we have a positive curvature, zero, and a negative curvature for, in this case, a total of three possible movements. Here we have the distance function again. This is the same as in the previous versions. And here we have this function which we discussed earlier, which determines if two states are close. So in this case, they are considered to be close if the heading difference is less than 15 degrees and the distance is less than two. And remember, each time we drive a segment, we actually drive a segment length of five. So now here comes our explore state space function, which we modeled similarly to our A star search, which we used in our previous program. So first we put the start node into the front. Now keep in mind that this here now is not x, y positions, but it is poses. So it is x, y and heading. And so in the beginning, we put in here the distance between the start pose and the goal pose, which is then the Euclidean distance between the x and y parts of those posts. We put in the cost, a small positive cost, and the start pose, and then we put in two more items, namely the previous pose and an index, and both of those are only needed in order to reconstruct our path later on. So as in our previous version, we have a set of visited cells, just to visualize which positions were explored by our algorithm. And also we keep track of all generated states. And this is similar to the came from data structure which we used in our A star implementation. Now here comes the main loop and it's pretty short. So I integrated a kind of a timeout. So if the front heap gets too large, you may play with that number. In my case, if it has more than 500,000 elements, I will just break the search I print out. There's a timeout and it will return without giving a path from start to go. So that is just a safety measure. Otherwise, as in A star, I pop the smallest item from the heap. I mark this item to be visited. And here's a small modification because my post now is X, Y and heading, where X and Y are now floating point numbers. I have to convert them into integers in order to use them as indices into my array. Now, after having marked this, I remember that I generated this pose and when I generated it, I came from previous pose with the move number move. 
and this move number is 0, 1 or 2 for left turn straight and go right this is exactly the index into this list of possible movements so then I check if I reach the go and as mentioned earlier I cannot just test if my pose is now exactly identical to my goal pose so I check if those dates are close and then in the end there's our usual loop overall possible movements so for i in x range of max movement id which is 3 so i is 0 1 or 2 I get this movement from the list of movements so I get a curvature and a length and I compute a new pose using my curve segment end pose function which we just discussed and after having this new pose I check if it is within the bounds of my world area if not I will skip the rest of the for loop and then as usual I check if there is no obstacle and if there is not I compute my new cost as the old cost plus the length of the segment and I compute the new total cost as this new cost plus the distance to the goal and then I push this new element consisting of the total cost the new cost the new pose my previous pose where I came from and I which is the number of the movement that has led to this entry in my heap so this is all pretty much the same as to what we did in our previous A star implementation and finally down here there is the backwards unwinding of the path which is then returned together with the visited cells now when you run this and you place the start position by shift left clicking then you have another option namely if after you click you just drag the mouse then you can also define the heading and not only the position so say we start going to the right and then we want to end up down here wherever looking to the left now I'll switch off the visited cells for a moment then we get a trajectory like this which makes perfectly sense so we drive in that direction drive down here and then end up here in the correct orientation now let's see what happens if that distance here gets closer then yes the curve gets narrower the radius decreases until we end up in a situation like that where we see that we already have reached the maximum curvature at which our car can go so if we force those two points to be at an even smaller distance it plans differently it first does a left turn then does the minimum radius right turn and then does a left turn again to end up in the correct orientation in that point so that is pretty cool now also it is able to come up with pretty interesting solutions for example if you have to go down there but with the same orientation as the original orientation it will make a loop up here now if there is an obstacle it will make the loop down here and if there is an obstacle it will take a while and then it will go around it so that is pretty cool now let us have a look at an interesting effect which happens when we go over longer distances so first of all everything looks okay we go from here to take a left turn go up here take a right turn we end up slightly off but that is the tolerance we allow and if we show the visited nodes we see it it is pretty straightforward so these are the possible turns that we visited and these are the five unit distance increments it goes up here and everything is all right now if we change the orientation of our start point say we go up this time it works as well we have a little bit of an extra cost up here if it goes down it's fine if we go left it's fine too So let's go right again. Now, if we try the same with our endpoint, so the orientation should be downwards, then we see it takes a long time. In this case, it tells me there's a timeout. So, what happens? Well, if we change the orientation of the start point, it seems to be not so bad. But if we change the orientation of the endpoint, it takes very long and doesn't come up with a solution. We also see the huge difference between the endpoint oriented to the right where only a few cells 
are visited and the endpoint in a different orientation, where many cells are explored, in some cases so many, that it does not come up with a solution. And so what happens is that our A star like implementation surely tries to move to the goal as quickly as possible, but then when it arrives at the goal, it has a completely wrong orientation. And so in order to have the correct orientation, it needs to do a huge turn. So something like this, it starts here with the correct orientation, then it is dragged towards the goal, but then here it has to start this huge turn in order to end up in the correct orientation here. So as early as here, it has to plan for ending up in the correct orientation up here. And this induces a huge number of states to be explored. So what do you think? Is this a major flaw in our approach? Or do you think that we just need a faster computer with probably also more memory to fix this? What do you think?